In this video we're making the Hawker Hurricane Mark II B by Revel. I've uh, pre-cut the cockpit parts and I've got them ready for spray. in some injector pin marks there aren't too many there's a couple on the fuselage though here I'm just getting ready to spray the base coat of flat black and the um, top coat will go on after that I used Alcad's white aluminium for the frame. Here's the parts getting ready to assemble. A um, couple of parts needed a touch up. Uh, but overall not too bad uh, now this part now I'm showing this to the camera uh, because there's a massive amount of flash on the top and the bottom uh, so it doesn't sit together well and all that needs to be trimmed back and uh, before you get assembly once that's done though uh, it will f sit together pretty well I didn't have any particular troubles fitting the cockpit together and um, if you follow instructions dry fit a few times uh, I'm sure uh, most people can pick it up and get it. The, there are a couple of YouTube videos out there that uh, go into in-depth uh, assembly uh, if you want to pursue those but my feeling is the instructions are, are clear enough for most people to get it without any too many issues. I bought the, um, the. I was disappointed with uh, Revel's um, decals for the instrument board on a 132, and so I've uh, purchased the uh, aftermarket kit. It's uh, 3D color printed, and um, and it looks quite good when it's it's uh, uh, fitted and completed. Um, it's all right. So a little bit of trimming, a little bit of work on it. It was for a Mark One. But I think the uh, it's so close to the Mark II, I was prepared to live with any discrepancies. And this tiny little part is the uh, the compass, and uh, it should have been fitted um, beforehand. And uh, I did forget to fit it, and uh, but it slipped in without any problems. Just trimming a part off the off the edge, and a um, little brass fennel goes on the side. It looks really good when it's done. As you can see, there's some seat belts there. I've got the uh, HGW seat belts and mast set, um, and uh, the seat belts I didn't fit correctly, but I had to alter uh, later on in the build once I realised that I'd um, mucked it up. And here's the, the 
fuselage parts and uh, I'm just doing a few little uh, weathering washes on the cockpit here uh, so just getting ready for uh, final assembly of the fuselage When you come to assemble the uh, cockpit section it doesn't all glue in so make sure you read the instructions carefully there's only at certain points where it's glued the fuselage went together uh, fairly well it was tricky um, and I think the trick is to glue uh, a small section and then secure that with tape or clips uh, and then move on The canopy, in the instructions it says to tape it on, but I'm going to have an open cockpit, so I used the um, closed cockpit canopy, masked it off, stuck a little bit of um, contact clear and with, with the idea of taking it off later on in the build. Here we're putting together the suspension. A lot of people have had a lot of trouble putting this part together and for me it went together really easily. Um, no big deal. I did a lot of dry fitting, a lot of reading the instructions. Um, didn't really have too many troubles um, and actually really enjoyed putting the, the part together. You see the two yellow masks, they come with the HGW uh, mask kit to mask off the sight glass for the cockpit, for the pilot in the cockpit, so you can see the landing gear. So I found that it went together all pretty well. Uh, need to assemble it up and then um, spray it up after that. Here's the finished spray. I used um, XF56. Um, I looked up some pictures online. I found that to be the closest match to the um, undercarriage. And also the, uh, the colors and the weathering I do uh, is what I saw in the pictures and as I said this weathering that I'm doing is uh, I'm basically working off a photograph that I saw I did have to make that hole a little bit bigger um, uh, that the, the that uh, pipe slips into it on the rear. Um, I found it too tight. And do lots of dry fitting with the wings and this section. Um, and there I um, I took the holes out for the um, where the the waste ammo is coming out of the machine gun. So I uh, made those open and uh, painted the inside black. There is one part that is poorly fitted uh, where the port wing joins the fuselage at the front. There's a, a big hole and a step as well, which will need filling and filing back. 
Uh, I've not seen anyone yet who has not had that issue. So uh, there's definite flaw in the kit. So this part needs to be shaved down. Uh, I've watched a couple of videos and every single one of them has said it doesn't fit. You need to take about a millimeter off, uh, off um, the big end and use a flat metal file. So you get a square, uh, so it's square when you uh, file it down. And you should file it then just pings in just nicely. But I've not seen anyone yet who, ha who has had that part fit properly. And I'm deviating away from the schemes and decided to go with a uh, 238 Squadron, which is uh, and they're Tropical Hurricanes and a Mark IIb. Uh, because in the Revel kit, there is a uh, nose for Tropical version, uh, which I don't think anyone's picked up on. So, yeah, there it is. So let's put the Tropical nose on and have a Tropical scheme. Inside the nose, uh, there's a Volks filter as well that needs to be fitted. Uh, that's also uh, on the sprues. Getting on and spraying up the um, other parts. There were so few parts on the Revel kit, I was going to have the flaps up, but <laughs> as it was pretty much the only option to do something different was to have the flaps down, I decided to go flaps down. Now here I'm just spraying up the um, undercarriage suspension and so on which is actually um, well made and goes together well. So after spraying the model with uh, Mr. Surfacer 1500 white, I then used uh, Mr. Mahogany Surfacer 1000, diluted down with um, uh, the leveling thinner. When I looked at the photographs of the hurricanes in the desert, I noticed that a lot of the color schemes are bleached out. Um, so the colors on the top of the plane tend to be uh, a lot paler than the ones down beneath, uh, which would make a lot of sense um, being in the desert. So here I've just tried to uh, put a lot of shading into the, the uh, lower down bits and leave the top bits with hardly any on. So that done, we're on to the first of the camo colours, which is the uh, uh, the underside, and that is in RAF as a blue by AK. Uh, it's a lovely colour actually, and it goes on really well. Um, a bit of uh, Mr. Surf's uh, levelling fluid on it again. So 
for once the two coats were done I then diluted off the blue a little drop of white or buff and uh, use a camo mask on it uh, just to put some highlights in and you can just about sort of see see those on the two wings um, just to get rid of the flat color here I'm just touching up a few parts that still need to be uh, painted up Here I'm just putting on the um, landing gear. Uh, went to go really well. Really like doing this part. Um, it's quite satisfying. Um, the, the fit I found quite good. Here I'm just painting the tips of the propeller. Um, I decided to go yellow over black to um, deepen the shade of yellow, but oh my god, so many coats. Here I've put on the um, first colour of the camouflage and there's some uh, masks that I've uh, I purchased to put over the top. Uh, we've jumped forward and I've put the propellers on, the exhaust is on, the wheels are on uh, and I've painted up where the, the guns are and here I'm just glossing up ready for the uh, decals and transfers. Now obviously the kit doesn't actually come with the um, desert scheme transfers so I've had to uh, improvise and make my own but first we need to gloss it and it was the first time using this um, glossing agent uh, I actually really liked it it's very good now it's just a case of putting on some of the uh, the kit transfers but when it comes down to uh, the numbers and uh, the letters and so on, then I had to uh, make my own. These Revel transfers are, are superb though, absolutely superb. So here we are with the um, most of the decals on now. I've had to do my own lettering. Uh, so this was a, an interesting experiment. It's the first time I've been doing this. Took a little bit of jiggery pokery to get the correct size and um, the letters as close to the original as I could do. Basically, the, my only tip is make sure that the um, film is actually so stuck down on that, it, that there is no bleed error at all and then go so light on the um, spray gun that it does, doesn't cause any run at all. In hindsight, what I should have done is printed off the decals on the photo uh, on a scanner, cut out the little transfer and then printed the, um, the J, the K and the C uh, in one go and cut them out um, and put and space it with the, um, the Randall in. now so extremely light coats and um, just take your time with it and before you know it they'll be ready the other trick of course is to just watch the angle on the airbrush so you're coming straight down on it and not trying to push it up underneath the film Excuse my little furry friend up there in the corner. Um, he was just coming and having a little look, see what's going on. Um, 
anyway so the next part of course is to print off the um id again uh, i had to print it off onto a clear decal film and so on um which was an experience in itself and there's a very good video uh, by greg's models he really does go into detail and uh uh, good tips on there on how to do this so uh, if you're interested I suggest you'd watch his um, short film here I'm just about to take the canopy off I only put a bit of white glue on it so it pings off quite quite easily So here I'm just doing some, um, some, just doing some washes, some oil washes, just to um, uh, ping out the uh, detail. When it was all done, I did do an extremely light coat of desert, uh, desert sand um, color, uh, highly diluted down, uh, just over the whole model, um, just to give that slight indication of, uh, you know, sand blowing around. You always know when you're close to finishing when you're doing the old matte varnish. So I did the matte varnish here um, and then I carried on, did a little bit of chipping and weathering after the application of the matte varnish. Also I matte varnished the final canop the canopy separately and then added it on afterwards so here we go got the open canopies fitted pretty much most of it's done and um, just starting to reveal which of course is uh, one of my satisfying parts just see that sort of dusty colour uh, well spread the sort of sand over it it just leaves that sort of slight film over it I'm quite keen on that one. 